Hey guys, it's Lucy, and today I'm going to be doing my October wrap-up. Yes, this is many months late, but I still wanted to talk about the books that I read in October because I read a lot of them, so that is what we're doing today. So in October I read nine books, which is a lot for me. That's like a pretty pretty good reading month. I have no idea why I read so much, honestly. First I finished The Diviners by Libba Bray. I listened to the audiobook, which was read by January Lavoie. This is a pretty popular series, so you probably know what it's about, but if you don't know, a very brief synopsis is that it's about a group of teenagers. I forgot the main character's name, but she ends up moving to New York City to move in with her uncle who has like a museum of like oddities, I forgot what to call them. And then she ends up like meeting a bunch of people who then get caught up in this giant like murder mystery. I really enjoyed reading this. I especially like the multiple perspectives that it was told from. So even though we do have our main character whose name I still forgot, we do get perspectives from other characters who are involved in the story and we get a little bit of them and like what their thoughts are and thing and we follow what's happening to them as well and so I really enjoyed that aspect. I thought the writing was really good and it completely conveyed like the atmosphere of the book. Like it's supposed to be like the roaring 20s but there's like a little creepy setting because the museum is full of creepy things and this like a murder mystery and there's like ghosts and things like involved so it like really helped convey that feeling. It was just creepy enough for me. If you don't know I'm not one for super scary things like I can read like horror books. I can't watch horror movies. I can read horror books, but this was just like creepy enough where it's like, ooh, like spooky, but like not so creepy that I'm having nightmares, you know? Which I honestly did not expect. Like the first like truly creepy scene, I was like, no way, this is not happening. This is not happening. Then it happened. And I was like, oh my god, wait, this is so like, it was so well done. Like it had such a good buildup. I will say that this did read like an introduction book. This was the first book in a four book series, I think. I thought it was going to be a six book series, but now I'm hearing it's four books. The third book is out now. So it did feel like an introduction book in the sense that we're getting introduced to all the characters. There's a lot of backstory that needs to be given and like hints need to be dropped for things in later books. But it did still feel like a complete book. Um, so I feel like I could have read it as a standalone if I wanted to. I will be continuing on in the series. Uh, I'm not sure when. I Probably when the fourth book gets a release date because I know there's a large gap between the second and the first book and there was like not as big gap between the second and third book but still like a long time so I don't want to read like the, up to the third book and then the fourth book's not coming out for like three years. Next I read The Invasion of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. I actually finished the series so I will also be talking about the fate of the tearling in this wrap-up but later on because obviously I read it after this book. So I mentioned this in my September wrap-up but basically I started The Queen of the Tearling and I really really loved it. Like it was such a great like first book in a series. Like one of the best first books in a like fantasy series I've read in like a long time. Like I was just so enamored by like the characters and the world and all these things. I'm thinking about revising my rating of The Queen of the Tearling because I think I gave it like four and a half stars. I think it deserves a five like months later. Um, now that I finished the series, like even still thinking about the first book, like it was just so good. Basically the point is I loved The Queen of the Tearling, the first book in the series, and I read The Invasion of the Tearling, the second book in the series in October, and I also really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. I did not love it as much as The Queen of the Tearling just because I think nothing can compare, but it was still like a good continuation of the series. I loved learning more about the characters. The writing is still like just as good as the first book. Basically the series follows Kelsey, who is the next queen of the Tearling. The Tearling is like the society kingdom and she comes of age at age 19 and then she like ascends to the throne and it's about her like taking on all the things that have happened with the kingdom while she was like growing up and things and couldn't be the queen and like trying to figure out how to solve all the kingdom's issues and in this book we see like a darker side of Kelsey, something like a new character is kind of introduced as well and like all of that was really good. I enjoyed it. Next I read Where'd You Go Bernadette by Maria Semple. This is about a woman named Bernadette who basically disappears. No one knows where she went and so her daughter takes like her emails and like messages and stuff and kind of compiles them into a dossier to try and figure out where her mom went and we're reading like the dossier and like the daughter makes like intermittent comments and stuff. But yeah this is basically about rich people in Seattle and like the problems that they have and I enjoyed reading this book. I gave it three and a half stars. This did have a lot going for it already for me because I love books told in alternative formats. I love like journal styles, any kind of like epistolary format I love. The situations involved in the story were definitely dramatic and over the top but it was still like a fun read and kind of what I was looking for. It didn't really take itself too seriously so it kind of fit in the story. My only issue was that there was like mental illness 
not representation, I don't know what to call it, basically Bernadette displayed a lot of symptoms of being agoraphobic. She basically gets like an online assistant to do like every task she needs so she doesn't have to leave the house. I don't know a lot about agoraphobia but it's not like that because she's still able to like leave her house. She has certain situations where she doesn't want to so maybe that's like part of it, I'm not sure. But like it's really not dealt with it well. It's kind of ignored until it's not ignored and then that is like some weird comical thing and I'm like shouldn't we be taking this a little more seriously? So it has that issue. So if that's something that would bother you, I don't recommend reading it, but if you're willing to ignore that and you just want like a light, like fun, like completely over the top read, then I'd recommend it for that. Anne of Avonlea by Ellen Montgomery. This is the second book in the Anne of Green Gables series. There's like 10 books in it or something. I'm trying to read like a book a year. Maybe next year I'll read two. Um, but I'm just reading them until I decide I don't want to read them anymore because I've kind of heard the later books get a little like not as good. Um, but right now I'm still loving reading from Anne's voice and reading from her perspective. This one follows Anne like after the events of the first book obviously and she is 16 years old now and she's about to take over for teaching at the schoolhouse in Avonlea. So we follow her through that and like I said Anne is a joy to read from. She just has such like a great perspective on life. I don't know, she's like a shining sunshine. I don't know how to explain it. And also I listened to the audiobook read by Karen Savage. I used the LibriVox app because this is a classic so it's not under copyright. So it was free. So if you also want to use the LibriVox app to listen to it, I recommend Karen Savage's audiobook. My only issue with the book, not Karen Savage, is that like a twin characters are introduced to this story and in this they're kind of like a like opposite twin kind of thing. But one of the twins, Davy, is like literally a nightmare and possibly a sociopath, I'm a little convinced. And the other girl is literally an angel, like that's how she's described in the book. But everyone loves Davy so much and it just like bothered me and I'm like this feels like some kind of sexism is involved here. So that was my big issue, but other than that I really do like reading from Anne's perspective and I will be continuing on in the series. Our Dark Duet by Victoria Schwab. This is the second book in the this Savage Song duology, so I've now finished a duology, which is great. I gave this four stars. This duology basically follows a city in the near future, I guess, or it's a fantasy, I'm not really sure, but basically a city where violent acts cause literal monsters to be formed. So depending on like the severity of the violent acts, a different monster is formed. And then the city gets split up into two. One side are the people who have committed to not doing violent acts to try and keep the monsters at bay and like they don't let monsters into their half of the city and things like that or anyone who has ever done a violent act because their soul is like corrupted or whatever and then the other half you like you pay for protection against the monsters to like the head person of that half and we follow two characters from either side so finishing the second book Nothing really wowed me, but I still had a good time reading it, so I think I mentioned I gave it four stars. This series, I feel like weird because I gave both the books four stars, but I kind of feel like it's a three and a half star series. Like, nothing wowed me, but not, neither of the books were, like, bad. Like, they were both pretty good books. It's just, like, as a series, it just wasn't the greatest I've read. In this book, a non-binary character is introduced, which go for diversity of gender, but I kind of felt like they were underdeveloped and underutilized a little bit because, like, not underutilized, just a little underdeveloped because we had the first book for all the other characters to get to know them and like I could only see them from like just from this book. Like they didn't have another book for any character development. Next we have what I think is the worst book that I read in October and that was The Hundred Lies of Lizzie Lovett by Chelsea Sedoti. I gave this book three stars. I listened to the audiobook which was read by Jessica Alme, which did not do the book any favors because the voice she gave the characters was just like so like cringy and like grating and like at the same time it fit kind of the book and like the main character which I'll talk about but at the same time it just wasn't pleasing to listen to and also I'm inserting a trigger warning for suicide for this book. In this book we follow a girl named Hawthorne who kind of inserts herself into the investigation after one girl named Lizzie Lovett, hence the title, goes missing and she kind of just like wants to get involved and figure out what's going on but um it is not at all what I expected I kind of I don't know what I was expecting but it definitely was not this um I don't want to give you spoilers to tell you guys like what happened but it was just like so ridiculous and like I was really like what am I reading to go with that the main character was awful like she's just an awful person she was just so annoying and selfish that it made it so hard to read from her perspective like this girl has gone missing and she like makes it about herself and there's no reason for that she's just like 
a weirdo. It's not like the girl was like her best friend. She claims to not even like this girl, but she's like obsessed with her, which also didn't make any sense. So her thoughts and actions actually didn't make any sense in regards to that or like most of the things she did because she was always saying one thing and like doing another and then she gets called out on it and like doesn't fix it. I kept reading to see if the plot would get better but it did not because the plot was just so weird. Like I don't know like I can read weird books but it just didn't make any sense for what the author seemed to be going for in terms of tone that just like the theories that were going on like they just didn't make any sense and I was like what am I reading? So yeah, this got three stars. I do not recommend it. I There are better books out there about, I don't even know what this is about, honestly. Like, I don't know what this book was supposed to like teach me or tell me. And next we have possibly my favorite book that I read in the month of October, and that was Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. This is another popular one on booktube. This is about a girl named Eliza who is super shy and mostly keeps to herself out at school and like in real life, but online she is the creator of a like super famous webcomic called Monster C and we follow her after the comic's biggest fanfiction writer, Wallace, moves to her school and they form a friendship but she keeps her identity a secret and so it's about how like that affects them and the relationship and it's just so good you know oh i gave this four and a half stars this book is super duper angsty like so angsty but it just read so real and raw that the angst like it felt like good i don't know <laughs> like this is like me in high school a little bit which i'm ashamed to admit but like it just feels like so real the story completely drew me in and i just wanted to keep reading Liza and Wallace's relationship was just so freaking adorable. The other relationships described in this book are, were also done well in my opinion. There are also like online friendships featured in this book which I have not read a lot of and they're treated like you know real friendships as they should be. This book is pretty similar to Fangirl like the whole like they make super popular media and they're both introverted people. It's just like it's pretty similar to Fangirl so I feel like if you like Fangirl you'll like this. I'm not sure it's the opposite because I've seen a lot of people talk about how they didn't like fangirl but enjoyed this but definitely if you liked fangirl you'll enjoy this I feel like although I will say that the like this also has the like media inserted into the story kind of and I didn't enjoy these as much there's like pictures throughout and stuff can you see it yeah and just like various inserts from like the comic and I didn't enjoy those as much um as I did the inserts from fangirl so there's that but the like actual plot I really loved there's a trigger warning for anxiety and suicide in this book, so keep that in mind. But the heavier topics I thought were dealt with well. The anxiety, even though I don't have diagnosed like generalized anxiety or anything like that, I still found it like hashtag relatable. There's just like one little issue at the end where something happened that bothered me, which is why I got four and a half stars and not five, but I can't talk about it because it's a spoiler, but I did really love this book. Second to last, I read The Fate of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. This is the last book in the Queen of the Tearling trilogy. Like I mentioned, I did finish this trilogy in October. I gave this one three and a half stars. Um, I kind of almost want to give it three stars, I know. Basically what ruined the series for me, not ruined because I still love the series, I, the writing is so good, like the characters are done so well. The ending of this book employed my least favorite trope, I don't want to spoil it, but if you know how this book ends, and I'm sure you can guess, if you really want to know, you can comment down below, like with the spoiler warning and everything, and I'll tell you what it was. But it just did that and I really did not like that, it bothered me so much and so I was enjoying the book until like the second or third to last chapter um, when I realized what was about to happen and I was not a fan and that really just like ruined the ending of this book and like ruined this book for me. But I will say, like I said, the majority of the book series does hold up. This was just extra disappointing because I just fell in so much love with the first book that like for the series to end like this it was just like heartbreaking. But if you don't mind this trope, then like you would probably enjoy this book, like maybe you'll love it. I would recommend it if you don't mind this trope. Honestly, even if you do mind this trope, because the first two books are so worth it anyway, that I don't know. But if you like fantasy with a high political entry, I don't think I've mentioned this that much, but there's like a lot of political entry in this series because it's a lot of her like in court, like trying to figure out like what's going on with other kingdoms, how to get this kingdom to like stop doing what they're doing and like all these things and like a broad spectrum of gray characters, then I would recommend this series. And last but not least, we have Winter by Marissa Meyer. 
This is the last book in the Lunar Chronicles series. I listened to the audiobook read by Rebecca Solaire. It's been a long time since I read the third book, Crest, so I wasn't sure how invested I'd be in the series now, but I still decided to pick it up because it was on my list of books that I should read in 2017, and I only completed half of this list. But this was one of the half. It did take a little bit to get the ball rolling so I could remember all the characters and stuff, but once I did, it was like smooth sailing, like I enjoyed reading it. I'm glad I read it. It was nice to see how everything ended and how all the character arcs ended. Um, I know there's that epilogue that I'm probably not going to read because honestly, after reading this, I can say I've lost interest in the series or anything else in this world. Just like not for me as much anymore, but I did give this four stars. It was definitely an enjoyable book. So those are all the books that I read in the month of October. Stay tuned for my November wrap up. I read much less. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a like. If you have any opinions about any of the books I talked about in this video, please be sure to leave a comment down below. And I'm doing the 12 Days of Lucy Reads, which is where I do a video every day until the new year. So if you'd like to be a part of that, please subscribe to my channel. And thank you again for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!